They say that time will heal all wounds and that money will make us forget a lot faster. Now I'll have to admit that last part is mine, but you can reference Scarlett Johansson and Disney or Sylvester Stallone and Warner Brothers for examples. In 2019, Spyglass Media seemingly saved the Scream franchise from obscurity and quickly resurrected it from the dead after purchasing it. However, they may have caused more damage than good in the short time that they have owned it. Dividing a fan base in their first film with hints that Stu Marker was alive, and then setting the whole Scream universe ablaze with refusing to pay their female leads the money that they're worth by trying to squeeze out every single penny and profit from the most lucrative genre in the film industry. After all, it's not like any studio needs to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on effects or big name stars to put butts in seats for a horror film. All they need to do is tell a damn good story, make it believable, and us fans will be there in droves. It's actually a rather easy formula when you think about it. Tell a good story, make money, something that seems to escape many in Hollywood today. While this video was originally meant to reveal five suspects behind the cult of Ghostface, many of us Scream fans have fallen into despair with the recent departures from the next film. But fear not, because I am here to tell you about five potential stories that could save Scream 7 and the franchise that we may or may not see next. Scream 5. With the fifth film dropping the number from the title, the next film could be a direct sequel to part 4, bringing many of the franchise's legacy characters back. The film would open with the murder of Neil Prescott, prompting Sidney, Mark, Gale, Dewey, and Kirby to return to Woodsboro for the funeral. Judy is the sheriff, who character-wise still lacks tact. She arrives at the funeral home with a dire warning, advising that it's not safe for Sydney and the others to remain in town because the killer recorded a video of themselves wearing a ghost face mask at the crime scene, welcoming Sydney home and into the final chapter of the franchise. But before they could react, Ghostface strikes the funeral home, killing Kirby and abducting Mark to ensure that no one leaves. Ghostface would begin to upload a series of videos online with each victim that he kills, taunting Sidney, Dewey, and Gale about a buried secret from their past, and that Mark's life hung in the balance of the truth being revealed to Sidney. Sid begins to question her friends on what the messages could mean, causing tension and mistrust amongst them, until we get our final first big reveal. Gale is murdered. And in Ghostface's latest video, he singles out Dewey, asking if he was prepared to go to the grave with his secret and cause the death of Mark. A shaken but seething with revenge, Dewey reveals his secret. Stu had never died and instead had been locked away in a mental institution. The police department had quietly covered his survival up and convinced Gale to downplay his role in her books, with the focus heavily being around Billy. The climax of the film would see the sole survivors, Sidney and Dewey, return to a condemned mocker house to face Stu one last time and save her husband. Number four. Cult of Ghostface. In the event that Spyglass is only able to bring back contracted cast for the next film, they have the opportunity to tell two different stories. The first being a soft reboot of the franchise, which would allow them to introduce a new leading cast while building around one legacy character. Dropping the Scream name would allow them the time to work at repairing the fractured relationships with the previous leads. 
In the cult of Ghostface, Kirby returns to Atlanta after the events that took place in New York, where she learns that the detectives at her agency have intercepted the next string of murders and have taken two of the cult members into custody. As they interrogate the members, they soon discover that the person that leads the cult refers to themselves as Willow, and their next target is Kirby. As Kirby starts to unravel the mystery around the cult, she soon realizes that the clues tie to a movie, The Wicker Man, and that the cult members they have captured were a part of a ruse to lure her into a trap in the climax that ends in her death after she discovers who is behind the cult, but before she is able to reveal it to anyone, including the audience. Setting the stage for the next film. Number three. Scream 25. In a bold move with a tentative release date in 2025, Spyglass would follow a similar approach that Halloween took with H2O. Scream 7 would be a retcon of the previous three films, becoming a direct sequel to Scream 3 for its 25th anniversary. Like our previous entry, the studio would try to win back the fan base by bringing back legacy characters. Only in this one, Nev Campbell does not come back. Instead, we see Dewey, Gale, and another fan favorite, Jennifer Jolie, return in a story that would center around the aftermath of Gale's book, Stabbed in the Back, The Real Sunrise Story. For those not in the know, Gail's book revealed the decades of sexual assault, rape, and the strange disappearances of actresses who worked at the studio. Elaine Varsi went missing in 1970 and Loretta Fisher in 1972. It is also during this time that a young starlet with stars in her eyes moved from Woodsboro to chase after her Hollywood dreams and changed her name from Maureen Prescott to Rena Reynolds. It was rumored that the women who went missing became entangled in affairs with multiple men associated with the studio. In the disappearance of Fisher, a lawsuit was filed shortly after her disappearance claiming that the studio was responsible for her missing, and the studio responded with offering a small settlement. To commemorate its release, the story was being turned into a true crime series that would explore each case until it concluded with the Stab 3 murders. Gail returns to Hollywood to oversee the production when a series of accidental deaths begin to befall the cast, prompting her suspicions that someone associated with the now-defunct Sunrise Studios may be behind the accidents. It isn't long before Gail encounters Ghostface as panic spreads through the studio, causing the production of the new series to be shut down. In our shocking conclusion to the film, two killers would be revealed. The first killer, a young production assistant from the TV series who talks about how Gail's lies and greed ruined his life, but in typical Gail fashion, she tells him to put on his big boy pants and grow up. That's when he reveals his accomplice, a person from her and Jennifer's past, Angelina, Roman's former girlfriend and his mother. Angelina reveals how they blame Gail for taking advantage of Roman to get dirt on the studio for her book, and then never revealing that Roman had helped her, and what drove him to kill everyone in her follow-up. Number 2 Scream 7 If Spyglass Media felt confident in resolving their relationship with Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega after being able to have Nev Campbell return, then 7 could also be a continuation of the previous films. In a recent Popcorn Theory, we revealed a line cut from the script of Part 6, where Detective Bailey reveals that after they were done with Sam and Tara, they were heading to Seattle to kill that bitch Sydney. Part 7 would shift to a new setting. Seattle's North Country, where Mark has transferred so that they could take refuge deep in the woods where no one could find them while the murders in New York unfolded. But it isn't long until the bodies of a young high school couple are found staged like the Casey Becker crime scene. 
Mark tries not to alarm Sydney to what is going on and begins investigating the murders, which lead him to discover that several members of their town are members of the cult before meeting his own demise. Sydney, trapped in her home, has to fight for survival against several members of the cult while trying to make sense of what is going on. And just when she thinks she has gained the upper hand, she is confronted by the leader of the cult, Stumacher. Number one. Scream. Wrongfully accused. If Spyglass is unable to write the ship, they could do a complete reboot of the franchise by making Part 7 a prequel that revisits Billy and Stu's original motive from the first draft of the film, while combining it with the elements from the third film. Unable to cope with the trauma of her past, Maureen Prescott has turned to alcohol in hopes of burying the inner demons that had come with what happened at Sunrise Studios. Sadly, the booze only led her down a darker path of promiscuity. Maureen would begin to grow resentful of her daughter's innocence and try to recapture that feeling by seducing and beginning to groom Billy, and then eventually Stu. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to her, Roman would arrive in Woodsboro, hoping to establish a relationship with her. His excitement in the discovery of her identity led Roman to create a video diary of his journal to find her, that he had hoped to share with her one day. Only his investigation led him to uncover Maureen's secret affairs. Eventually, Roman would muster up the courage to confront Maureen setting aside what he had just learned, only to be turned away by her. In a drunken panic, she would reveal how he was conceived and the shame that seeing him had brought her, maybe going as far as saying that she wished she aborted him. Heartbroken and shunned, filled with rage, having seen that Maureen was sleeping with multiple men, blamed her for what happened, thinking of how her behavior had not changed since then. Not knowing what to do, he had to share his pain with somebody, and that somebody was Billy, who he revealed his father to be sleeping with Maureen. Soon after, they began to craft their plan for revenge. Do you agree with our list? Let us know by dropping it in the comments. And if you want to see the video about the suspected leaders of the Ghostface cult, drop that in the comments as well. And as always, we appreciate you for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're already not, and until the next, see ya.